Working with an access database requires a lot of work and maintenance. On this CD-ROM I discussed all the issues you might ever encounter when you deal with an access database. You can find that CD-ROM at genesispc.com. In this video I will focus on action queries. Queries can do a lot. They can sort your searches, they can filter, you can use parameters, they can combine information from multiple tables. That's not the query kind I'm talking about. Action queries do something to your records. They either update the records or they move, rec or they move records into another table. They append them to that table or they delete records from a certain table. Or you have a very good query result that you want to change into a table. Those are called action queries. If you want to know more than what I'm discussing today, you need that CD-ROM. Let me first show you the structure of this simple, simple database. I have only three little tables. One employee has many timesheets and one department has many employees. So let's start with an update query. Let's say we want to change the hourly rate for all the employees and you can specify for specific employees if you want to do that. But let's say we want to change that and update it by 105% of the current rate. So we start a query. You go to Query Design and say we want to update the table employees. And what is the field we want to update? It is the hourly rate field. Now we are going to change, this is a regular query, this would collect records. If I were going to show you the result, it would show me a bunch of hourly rates. But I'm going to make this an update query. So we go to the design tool and we say make it a update query. When you do that, at the bottom it adds a row that says update to. I'm going to zoom in there. Uh, you are going to update it to that field, to what the hourly rate was already, times a certain percentage. Never equal signs in queries. Here we are going to say we want the field hourly rate that we have already. Do you need those brackets? Not really, unless there is space in that thing. Make sure that you don't have typos. It will not recognize this field, for it's called hourly rate. And we multiply it by 1.05. That's what we put in there. If you go to the regular view, nothing has happened yet, because this is an action query. Action queries have to be run. So I go back to design and I click on the run button. You are about to update 15 rows. If you only want to do it for certain people, then you can do that if the hourly rate is larger than something or less than something. Yes. And now when I go to the other side of the screen, you will see that all those things have been updated. This is what they call an update query. I'm closing the query. I'm not saving it unless you want to use it for another occasion. I'm going to say no. Now we are going to work on the table employees. We are going to make an archive table for the table employees. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here is my table employees and I have a field there, there is, that says former. I'm going to say Betty Ford is a former employee. She retired or she went to another company. So we would like to put her in an archive table. How do I create an archive table? I just select the table I want. Control, control C for copy. Control V for paste. And let's call this TBL former employees. Make sure that you do structure only, otherwise you create a complete replica. Click OK. 
and there is the table former employees. There is no one in there, of course, except the new record with default values. So now we have to move or actually append Betty Ford from table employees to table former employees. I'm closing this guy and we start a new query that is an append query. So we start a regular query design. We want the table employees. And we want to append everything, but only if former is true. Or yes. So if you flip to the other side, you will see you got only this employee who is a former employee. Now we are going to move her or actually append her to the archives table. So we have to create an action query, append, and it says append to which table, former employees. It could be something in another database if you have an archive database. I'm just going to leave it this way. Did it happen already? No, because we have to run this one. By the way, I, I warn you that unfortunately it puts there again appended to former. So take that out for it did that already in the first column with the asterisk. It took every field. So now we are going to run this guy. We are about to append one and the query is done. If you want to for some reason, query append former employees, okay it. And there is your query append former employees. Did Betty arrive? Yes, she is in former employees. Is she still in table employees? Yes, because an append query does not move you, but it only makes a copy in another table. So I'm going to delete her now. So we are going to delete her from the table employees. We need a new query from table employees, the entire record, but only if former happens to be true, otherwise you would delete everyone from that database. I really warn you, you would delete every record in the table employees. How do we make it? A delete query. So now we get a delete from under condition that former is true. I always check it first before I run it. Yeah, that is the correct one. So I'm going back to the design view and all we have to do now is run it. Run the whole thing. It is one row. Yes. Okay. I'm going to close the query. I'm going to save it. Query delete former employees. Okay. Did she disappear from table employees? Yes, there is a Gerald Ford, but not, no more a Betty Ford. I, I warn you for one thing. Let's say we had done the following. I had made George Bush a former employee. So now when I run query append former, it warns you, you will modify data. I say, yes, I realize that you are about to append one row. Yes. And did George Bush arrive? Yes, he did. Now we are going to delete him. Yes, we know all of this. There is one row that's going to be deleted. And now it's going to tell you, I can't delete that record. Why? Let me explain that. If I would delete George Bush from here, he leaves behind a bunch of timesheets. Betty Ford didn't have timesheets. That's why we didn't have any problem there. So we have a problem here. I cannot do that. So what you have to do is you either have to first delete all the timesheets from George Bush or put them in an archive of timesheets. That is probably much better policy. And then you can delete George Bush. If you find that a lot of work, I'm going to tell you how you can do that much faster, but it's not a good solution. You double click on that link 
and you say cascade delete related records. Why is that not a good step to do? First of all, you can't see here that you did that. But secondly, if you would delete an employee here, you would automatically delete the timesheets. And if you ever need those timesheets for the IRS or whatever, the purpose is you cannot get them back anymore. You should have really worked backwards. Put this in an archive for all the employees who are former. Then delete them. And then finally delete George Bush. Let me show you in this case that now I can delete him. There is no problem. So now he is gone from the table employees. Okay. Finally, make table query. When would you do that? Sometimes you have a, a bunch of information that you have created from multiple tables. Let's say you have uh, employees and you have departments. And all you want to know from all the departments, who are the people in there? I'm just making it very simple. So you would get something like this. So I'm going to save that query. Query employees per department that com comes from different tables. Click OK. And now I would like to change that into a table. So what do we do? We create a query based on the query we report. We want everything in there. But now we are going to create a table from that thing. So make a table. The table name is going to be TBL for table employees per department in the current database. OK it. Is it done already? No, of course not, because we have to run that kind of queries. So we are going to run it. It's going to pass 13 rows into a new table. And there is your new table employees per department. Sometimes you need this step if you really want that table for someone to work with. But I warn you, it's a very dangerous one in this case, for you could change information in this table without in changing information in the main tables. Anyway, if you go for it, go for it. If you find this a little too fast, I tell you one more time, here is the CD-ROM that will solve all your questions. GenesisPC.com